Let's make something perfectly clear. I have no idea what's in this amendment. I'm just being honest with you. I love that. Okay. Which sexual orientations do you believe should be prohibited from Missouri classroom? So I believe, this is my personal belief, that we all have a moral compass. And my moral compass is compared with the Bible. Lady, I believe during your testimony, you said that you didn't want teachers' personal beliefs entering the classroom, but it seemed a lot like your personal belief you would like to enter all Missouri classrooms. Decorum is more than just rules. It is respect for each other, respect for the institution, and respect for this magnificent building. I have felt compelled to offer this amendment, which cleans up some of the language in Rule 98 by mirroring the previous language in the gentleman's dress code. I don't want the doorman to be walking around while we're engaging in important debate trying to figure out whether or not something is, is a blazer or while someone is in the middle of talking, uh, being able to speak on behalf of their district, someone thinks it's funny to, to go get a doorman or, or to point of order them in the middle of speaking because they may not understand the difference between a blazer, an Afghan, uh, a jacket, or something else. This is not what the taxpayer is paying, paying for us to do. I spend $1,200 on a suit and I can't wear it in the people's house because someone who doesn't have the range tells me that it's inappropriate. There are a lot of ways we could break decorum in this room, but a woman, what she's wearing, that is ridiculous. I have personally been called into question offline about what I was wearing, even though I was following rules. But it was some gentleman in this, in this room who decided that they wanted to question what I was wearing. You know what it feels like to have a bunch of men in this room looking at your top, trying to decide whether it's appropriate or not? Are we going to have um, Dana be checking our, our um, tags for whether it's a, a knit blend or a polyester blend or does silk count? I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. Lady, you're right. It is ridiculous. It is absolutely so absurd why are you doing it? that we even have to talk about it on the House floor. I agree. In so why did you bring it up? Chamber. Why should we talk about something like this? It is absolutely ridiculous. You, would you think, brought this you to would the think, floor, lady. You, you tell me. Think, you would think that all you would have to do is say, dress professionally, and women could handle it. You would think elected would officials think. could handle that. You would think, but no, we're, we're walking around men, here in sequins and velveteen, men, to the lady's point. So what is appropriate, and why do you get to decide? We need to get over the sequins. That's ridiculous. All right, so men are required to wear a jacket, a shirt, and a tie. Correct? And if they walked in here without a tie, they would get gaveled down in a heartbeat. Should we be if required to wear ties, lady? If they in without a jacket, because they, they would are? get gaveled down in a heartbeat. So we are so interested in being equal. So then we should, why didn't you write a rule that we w should wear ties too? If you want to be right, equal. Let's go for it. Equal, equal, equal playing ground. Let's all wear men's suits in this room, lady. Sexual orientation or gender identity is not part of the Missouri standards and does not have a place in a classroom. Exposure to such topics is inappropriate for children, creating confusion, which may then cause doubt in their identities. It is not the place of the school to indoctrinate our children by exposing them to gender and sexual identity curriculums and courses. It sounds like we've got some problems with definitions. I think everyone knows we've got problems with definitions. I want to go further into political beliefs in the classroom. Um, I was a teacher, as I know you were as well. Representative, did you ever inform your students on your beliefs? On my beliefs? Again, did my students let, know let I was me, gay? Yes. Yeah, no, they, they did. They did know I was gay. They would see my wedding ring and they would, they would ask about it. Oh. We have 14-year-olds walking down the middle of the street in the city of St. Louis carrying AR-15s. I remind the body and the author of this amendment to the amendment these four words. Shall not be infringed. The people in my district should not be 
penalized and lose their rights because of something that's going on solely in her district. And while it may be intuitive that the 14-year-old or whatnot has no legitimate purpose, it doesn't actually mean they're going to harm anyone. We don't know that yet. Is it good policy to basically start with the assumption that simply having a physical item is automatically causing harm, regardless of how you're using it and regardless of your age. It's important to us that we remember that there's a reason why we have these constitutional rights, and it's to protect the, the people from the government. And so for all those reasons, I'm not going to be able to vote for this amendment, for the construction of it and the principle of it and, and the, uh, the core value I have of it. This point of order or this uh, stripping of this amendment goes back to... How many times have we been stripped of our amendment down there? And that's, that's the reason that I have stood. So I'll open it up for questions. Hi, gentlemen. How are you? I'm fine. Good. Okay. Let's go over this. So from what I'm seeing on page 51, the part that it takes out, um, and, and stop me if I'm wrong, it's uh, line 123 to line 127. Is that right? Is that the part that you're taking out? Yeah, but well, let's make something perfectly. Let's make something perfectly clear. I have no idea what's in this amendment. I'm just being honest with you. I love that. Okay. And but it's time that we do something on this end that affects that end instead of that end always winning. And okay. so you're going to see me stand up between now and the end of session many a time you know what i'm familiar with you doing that so if anybody can acquire of me all they want okay. about what's in this i couldn't care couldn't get to okay. your truth i couldn't care less burn it down okay okay i'm with you thanks thanks mr speaker uh so i'm just going to read you the the language in your bill no classroom instruction by school personnel or third parties relating to sexual orientation or gender identity shall occur. Um, lady, you mentioned George Washington. Who is Martha Washington? His wife. Under your bill, how could you mention that in a classroom? So to me, that's not sexual orientation. Really? So it's only really certain sexual orientations that you want prohibited from have, introduction you, in the classroom. You have to make that better, to make it where you're not talking. Lady, I didn't introduce your bill. Okay. Uh, and I, I didn't write it. You wrote it, and so I'm asking what it means. You can believe something without, in, without, in, without putting that onto somebody by the way you behave. And you can have beliefs and morals and values that guide you through life. I, I don't dispute that, but I'm asking about the language of your bill and how it would permit the mention of the historical figure, Martha Washington. Could you explain that to me? So what does she, why, why is she famous? Is she famous because she's married with, to George Washington? It seems like that would be a relevant fact in her biography, yes. Could it be mentioned under the plain reading language of your bill? Is that a no? I, I, I don't know, sir. Okay, 